So your primary residence should not be an investment. And I'll explain that as we move along in the video. I want to apologize real quick. I forgot all my recording stuff. So I hope the microphone's okay. I just hit record on the, the iPhone and, and know that it may not be the best sound quality. And I can see it's not the best view either. Good afternoon, my name is Adam Kahn and I'm the Rational Investor. Today is Monday, February 5th. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about real estate, which is probably my favorite subject as well as the stock market, which I'm sure you know. But I wanted to get into why I say that your primary residence should not be an investment. Before I do though, if you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, I appreciate the support. Also by doing that, it helps YouTube's algorithm. It helps other people find the channel. And if you're enjoying the content, it helps them to be able to find it as well. So the reason I say that it's not an investment is I don't want people getting scared out by all the fear mongering that's been going on on YouTube. I also don't want you getting talked into buying a property either. But if you're in the right position and you have money saved up for down payment and you can easily afford the monthly payments and you have cushion, I don't think you should pay attention to whether the prices of houses go up or down. And there are a lot of things to think of counterintuitively that if you're hoping to upgrade one day, you may actually hope your house does go down in value. It really is dependent on your goal. Now, if you are young and maybe you're not married and you don't know if you're going to stay in the area that you're living in currently, maybe renting does make more sense. But for those of us who are married and have kids and don't plan on making any moves for a long time, there's some things that go into buying a house that really have nothing to do with an investment. It is a financial decision because you have to be in the right financial position to be able to afford the house. But I wouldn't look at it as an investment. I look at it as security for my wife and my son and myself and to have control over the place that we live in. Now, if the price of the property goes up or down, it really doesn't concern me too much. As long as I'm still able to comfortably afford my mortgage and I like the property that I'm in, I'm really not super concerned about its value. You know, my real thought on my primary residence is, as I pay that off over time, my son will get whatever it is and it'll be paid off or mostly paid off. And if it's worth more than what we paid or if it's worth less than what we paid, what's the difference? Why does it matter? I don't think of the home that I'm buying to live in as some investment vehicle that I hope to go up in value. Because let's pretend for a second it does go up in value. What good did that do me? Am I looking to sell it and then go rent or downsize? Like, what is the goal of the real estate? And you should really separate whether you're buying it as your primary residence or an investment property. And there are so many people on YouTube talking about this big collapse that's coming and trying to talk people out of buying properties that I think they're doing them a real disservice. Because here's the problem. Just as much as people might want to say that a realtor is only talking you into a house to get their commission and they may know that the housing market's going to go lower and they don't care. One, that's not true. Nobody knows what way the housing market's going to go. But it is also just as liable to tell somebody not to buy because what if the housing market does go higher and they've talked you out of purchasing and put you in a position where you never have that opportunity again. Now, this is not financial advice. I am not telling you what to do, whether to buy, whether not to buy. You guys really need to make your own financial decisions. But it is a realtor's job to help you buy a home. So I wouldn't look at it negatively if they are doing that as their job. It is not their job to talk you out of buying a home because you may or may not think the housing market is going lower. And if the housing market went lower and you bought your primary residence, you may find you're in a better position to upgrade. 
if housing fell 25% and you wanted to get into a bigger, more expensive house, well, so did the more expensive homes. And as a dollar amount, if you were looking at more expensive homes than the one that you purchased, well, it would be more in range with what you could potentially own. So as long as you didn't bite off too much originally, and maybe you could rent out the house that you moved in as your prim primary residence, you might actually find yourself in a better position if prices came down. Again, I'm not saying which way they're going. I'm not making any prediction. I can tell you what I think if you'd like to know, and I think there's a lack of inventory and there's still demand, and I think the primary driver of real estate is supply and demand, which tells me prices will probably continue to go higher unless the Fed pushes rates so high that they really squeeze the market, but that doesn't seem like that's the intention or where we're going currently. That being said, I'm cautious enough that I recognize I could be wrong. I'm not guaranteeing anything or saying one thing or another, but it really is what I believe. It is not some self-serving sales pitch to try to talk people into a house. At the same time, think it through about it's not a self-serving concept to talk somebody out of buying a house either. I would hate to talk you out of buying a home to watch prices continue to go higher and stick somebody in a position where they're stuck renting now for life when they really wanted to own. For me, it's really important to be in the right locations where I want my children to go to school. Well, child, since I only have one. Being near the people I wanted to be near. And if I'm in the right position where I can afford to do that, why would I worry about if there's some big housing collapse? Unless I think my job is in jeopardy or I won't be able to pay the bills, and then if that's the case, maybe I shouldn't be buying anyway. The only reason I think people should be really analyzing the economic data and the investment perspective on a property is if they're looking to buy an investment property. And if you are, by all means, you should be doing all of your due diligence on that. Whether you think the prices are gonna go higher, whether you think the rents make sense, whether you think there's gonna be repair costs and all the things that go into an investment property. But the reason to buy a primary residence is so you have control of your property. If you want to redo the kitchen, if you want to paint the walls pink for whatever reason, it allows you to do that and you never have to worry about a landlord who might sell the property or who may ask you to leave when your lease is up or whatever it is because they have their lives as well that make things that could cause you to have to make decisions that you're not ready to make. I see plenty of posts on this next next door app or whatever it is about my landlord decided to sell the property or my landlord is raising the rent or whatever it is that is pushing people to then have to move. I don't ever want to be in the position that I have to move out of something that's not in my control. So owning our house is really important to me because it gives us that security that I'm not reliant on somebody I have no control over. I have control only over me. I don't even have control over my kid or my wife or anybody else for that matter. What I do have control over are the things that I can. So if I can put myself in a position to own my home so I don't have to worry about somebody else's life decisions, that's what I would do for me and my family. Now, you need to decide what works for you and your family. Again, you need to make those financial choices. I'm just tired of listening to all these people talk about these gloom and doom and the economy doing so bad when non-farm payrolls show that we produced almost double the expected jobs that they expected last month. GDP has been super strong and unemployment hasn't been going through the roof despite the layoffs. These are all really great things. In fact, I would love to see a scenario where we have a little bit of inflation, that we also see the job staying strong, and the economy continuing to grow the way it has. I know, including myself, none of us like inflation. I get that. But inflation does not mean we're having a terrible economy. 
based on the data that the Fed looks at, we're actually having a very good economy. And hopefully that continues. Now, trust me, I don't like looking at concert tickets for you 2 at the Sphere for $800 to start. I would love to be able to take my wife there, but so what? It's just overpriced. Meanwhile, they're still selling out, which is pretty impressive, and things are more expensive than they used to be. So we adjust and we deal with it. And that's whether it means getting a second job to keep up with the bills we already have or cutting back on some of the things that we used to get to make the bills smaller. My God, I watched the gas bill out here in Las Vegas go up 50, 60, 70 percent of what it was. I'm really thrown off. The, the electric bills have gone up and the water bills as well. So don't take it the wrong way. I see it too. At the same time, I sure wouldn't let somebody scare me out of buying a home if it was the right time. You guys need to make that decision for yourselves. Again, thumbs up, like, subscribe. I apologize for the, the sound quality. I apologize for the, the, the background. It's raining out here and I couldn't get outside like I normally do. And last time, I don't know if you guys watched like an idiot walking in the rain. I'd been sick recently, probably shouldn't do that. Anyway, have a great Monday. I'm excited for the earnings for tomorrow. Uh, I assume you guys saw all the stuff from last week, which I was super excited to see. And I, I think we're gonna have a good year for equities and real estate. So talk to you tomorrow or the next day.